Welcome back to Hannity. 2020 is fast. Dozen candidates in a mad scramble to unseat President Trump. But many Americans are ready to sign back up for a Trump second term. The New York Times is reporting that Trump raised $105 million in his second quarter. The Times notes this is more than Obama did in the same quarter of his presidency. President Trump remarked about the 2020 field that his Democratic Party challengers look somewhat easier to debate than Clinton. And Hillary Clinton is casting a long shadow over the 2020 election. Trump critic Jonah Goldberg writes in a recent editorial that Hillary Clinton's candidacy was an inflection point for the country because it made the GOP turn towards nationalism and the Democrats towards socialism. Goldberg remarks, she'll never be president, but she's made history nonetheless. Joining us all to react to the 2020 news, Independent Women's Voice senior fellow Lisa Booth and Democratic strategist Leslie Marshall, both Fox News contributors. Lisa, I'll go to you first. Um, we've seen this lurch to the far left. I've said repeatedly this is the gift of the Trump presidency is exposing the left for what they've been essentially for 50 years. I mean, I took some notes before I came on. It's, a, we, it's probably a long list. Right? It is. So I'll have to give you the foot. Right. I'll have to give you the cliffs notes. In the last few months, we've heard talk of concentration camps in the U.S., infanticide, 70 percent tax rates, health care for illegals, government run health care. The list goes on and on and on. I mean, is this really a 51 percent majority agenda in America? Well, I think the biggest challenge for Democrats right now is the fact there's just so many candidates and there's not a lot of daylight between them on these policy issues. So that's why we've seen them try to, you know, be out crazy, the other one, essentially, to try to get notice and attention in this crowded primary field. But about Hillary Clinton pushing the party to the left, I think what pushed the party to the left was the fact that they saw an establishment candidate like Hillary Clinton lose. You saw the DNC essentially back her over Bernie Sanders, and that infuriated a lot of progressives and people on the left. So I think you saw a lot of those types of candidates go forward in the 2018 cycle and, you know, more primary contests than Democrats are used to seeing. Uh, and just progressives more fired up based on that. I'll go to 2020 campaign national press secretary Kaylee McEnany. Forgive me, Kaylee, for not introducing you. No You're worries. A valuable voice <laughs> in this conversation, of course. You know, this agenda I just mentioned to Lisa, which granted is not every Democrat. I'm not going to do what they do to us and stereotype the entire party. But these are issues that have come up. I mean, I'm just quoting some Democrats, concentration camps, Julian Castro, 70 percent tax rate, health care for illegal aliens. Everybody raises their hand. I mean, how does this play in West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, coal country? I mean, is this a winner in these in, in this swing state like Pennsylvania? No, no, no. Far from it. Let's be clear. These are asinine ideas. They are crazy ideas. They are insane. When you have 76% of the nation saying, I want border security, 70% saying stricter immigration laws. And what do Democrats say? Oh, let's decriminalize border crossings. Let's abolish ICE. That's a great idea. Then they say, let's look at late term abortion. 6% support abortion until birth. And Democrats say, sounds like a great idea. We'll endorse that. They are becoming the party of the 6%. And they can readily take that 6% as we at the Trump campaign and President Trump take the other 94% in a landslide re-election on November 3rd, 2020. Leslie, I'll, I'll go to you next here. I don't see this playing in middle America. I don't get it. The Democrats have tried this lurch to the left before. I mean, history is there for us all to read. They tried it with Mondale running on higher taxes. They tried it with Dukakis. Uh, they got absolutely filleted at the polls in both of those elections. This is not a winner in a national, in, a, in an electoral college national election. I mean, can they come back from this? Oh, absolutely. If you look historically in the most recent elections, including Bill Clinton, uh, the Democrats do in the primary tend to go to the left uh, because of their base. And in the general, they come more to the center. I think this will, will happen. Uh, I want to disagree with Jonah, though. This, the left pull is not Hillary Clinton. It is all Bernie Sanders. He got up and said he was a socialist. Some of his programs, the fight for $15 minimum wage, Medicare for all, these are embraced by all of the candidates and the majority of the Democratic Party right now. And that wasn't Hillary. That was all Bernie Sanders. Leslie, a brief just follow up with you. I, I got a few seconds left, but I, I agree with you that in the past, both parties will move back to the center after the general. But now that's getting harder with the Internet generation and social media. It's all on tape now. Everybody raising their exactly. hand. That's going to be used over and over. That wasn't the case 30 years ago where you could slip in a comment here or there. 
I don't think it's going to come down to left or right people uh, looking at a debate and saying who raised their hand. I mean, uh, you know that in this, if we no, look at the Lindsay, numbers, you know how the numbers show work. that the, 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 number, the, the numbers, Donald Trump campaign is going the, to play that. They're going to put that in an ad of all yes, those Democrats will. raising their hand, well, yeah, advocating Lisa, Lisa, for giving that's, illegal that's, that's immigrants. Not, but Healthcare. that's not also th one that's other not, key difference between now and between uh, this talk. election and 2016 <laughs> is the fact that President Trump's going to have a war chest of money. And so he doesn't have to just rely off that earned media like he did during the 2016 cycle. He's going to be able to dictate the terms of his message and how that gets across to voters. And that's going to be critical for 2020. Leslie, quick follow. We're going to remember, it, Lisa. Although we have two dozen people, we're going to have uh, two people on the stage at the end. The Democratic, you know, Democratic Leslie, nominee is going them. to dictate. May I finish? The Democratic candidate is going to dictate, and we're going to see the money spread out among 24, along with the DNC's cash flow, uh, definitely uh, come up. You have just with Buttigieg and Sanders, uh, you know, half of, of just with two people of what the president oh, cool. and the RNC raised. Uh, I'm not worried yet. Ladies, thanks a lot. Really Good appreciate day. it.